So my name is Kevin Sabet, and I'm a really popular guy in California because I've taken on the marijuana industry. So you can imagine how popular that is here, right? Um, but to be honest, uh, as a native Californian, seeing another addiction for profit industry, which is what it is, uh, that does bother me um, because it may not be Oxycontin or Purdue Pharma, but the marijuana industry, as you all, I hope, know, is all about money. It's not about recovery. It's not about health. Uh, and we've accepted it a little bit too easily, in my opinion. Um, doesn't mean that we should throw people in prison. I don't think we should. I don't want to criminalize users. I want to get help and treatment. But I also don't think that rich white guys from Wall Street should be benefiting from marijuana legalization and throwing on a social justice button uh, and to pretend that all of a sudden they care about social justice when they really care about their bank account. So, so that, that's my background here. I hope that's okay with you all. But um, you know, looking around, and, and I, I really want to give a shout out to P and CCAP and the great work they do, I, I know that immediately we need to take the peer support uh, work that you all are doing and replicate it across the country. Um, it's a model. CCAP is, is really a model that should be repl uh, replicated all over the country. And it's an example of a good idea. Um, it's an idea that I would have pushed if I was advising President Obama again, or as I did with Presidents Bush and Clinton. It's an idea that we need to spread nationally. But I, I got to be honest with you. I feel like too often we are faced with this idea that addiction and policy are hopeless, that there's nothing we can do, uh, that it's endemic, that we should give up on people. We should give up on their hopes, on their dreams. And I think that is succumbing really to a deeply rooted sinister philosophy, one that is a culture in this country sometimes of helplessness, addiction, um, and frankly, a culture of profit because there are people that do want to profit off of your addiction, whether they're companies on Wall Street or whether it's the uh, underground, whether it's the drug dealing world, both are trying to profit off of other people's suffering. Um, you know, it began about 100 years ago, as you know, with the invention of the modern cigarette. Most of you probably know tobacco has been used for thousands of years, and it was never deadly until we invented the cancer cigarette. Um, we invented that because of the Industrial Revolution. We added all kinds of chemicals to it, had multinational corporations run tobacco, and now tobacco is by far the deadliest uh, drug known to man and kills four times as many people as heroin or fentanyl but it's still in this country. Um, it took us a long time to realize that we were being duped by that industry, and now I feel like we're being duped by the commercialization of things like 99% THC dabs you could buy down the street from a company that is going to profit off of that. And of course, from Oxycontin and all of the issues with Purdue and the other opioid companies, it's a culture that we have of addiction for profit, addiction for profit. And I think it has to stop with us right now. It has to stop with the 23 million people in recovery who are living examples of how things can work, of why there, we do need to go for good policy and we can do things that reduce this problem. Uh, we don't, I don't think we have to accept a culture of addiction that appeals to our basis instincts. And frankly, I'm sick of hearing no, that nothing works, nothing works, nothing works. Uh, because all of you here today are an example of things of, of, of things and policies that work. Um, that's why I'm proud to stand with people like Pete. I'm proud to stand with people like Patrick Kennedy, like the president of the NAACP Illinois, who was joining us. Um, I'm proud to stand with former health secretaries, and I'm actually making an announcement right now for the first time in public, and that is um, we are starting a new organization to be a national drug policy organization, a think and action tank, not just a think tank, not just research, but action oriented policy from prevention all the way through to recovery, because it doesn't exist right now. We're in silos. And frankly, um, we're, we're getting beaten up by the addiction for profiteers that are out there. And so we're calling it the Foundation for Drug Policy Solutions. Um, it's really here to, that we're creating this so that people across the country can understand that there are things that work. So we are going to push for lawmakers to remember us, to think big. I'm really sick of the small thinking that we have in this field. We think way too small. We need big ideas that are going to make big dents. I'm all in favor of things that, you know, are keeping people alive, of course. But what happens after that? What are the systems in place to help that person after 
they were revived from naloxone. We need we need a system in place. We don't have it now. We need much bigger ideas than we have. We're thinking way too small. Um, I think we can change this culture of addiction, this culture of profit, turn it into a culture of hope, uh, a culture of a life worth living and promoting a life worth living. And, and we do that with a comprehensive approach that starts with prevention and goes all the way through to recovery. It is, it is a crime that a country like ours with its resources, for example, does not have a national treatment system for anyone who wants it or needs help. We still don't have that in this country. To me, that, that uh, it, it's mind boggling. And I think for too long, policymakers um, have been short-sighted in thinking about this issue. Um, and it's why we are where we are now. It's, it's why by the time I finish this, talk in two minutes, thousands of kids will have initiated drug use, leading them down a path to addiction. Why hundreds of people will have died by the time I end this talk, because we're not thinking bigger. So we have to say that today that changes. Uh, we are here. We know what we need. We know that people are suffering and we know what has to happen quick. But our new foundation needs your help, support, and participation. So we're launching our website tomorrow. It's called drugpolicysolutions.org. Please sign up for updates, get involved in our action network, but most importantly, help us sharpen and refine policy in Washington so we can make that big dent that we need to make. So I hear all the time that we need to meet people where they're at. And of course we do. Of course we have to meet people where they're at. But this disease is too powerful. It's affliction too deep. The pain and suffering too strong to simply meet people where they're at and not take them where they need to be. We can't leave people where they're at. Absolutely, let's meet them there, but we can't leave them there. Right now, there are too many Americans, too many lawmakers, too many people in power uh, who are not thinking about you. They're not thinking of you when they issue a press release during a campaign trail uh, to get points about addiction, yet when they win, they completely forget about following up on it. They're not thinking of you when they perpetuate an insurance system that treats our brain as a separate part of our body, literally, by taking mental disorders and separating it completely from physical disorders. Um, and they're not thinking of you when they push for companies that profit off of addiction so that they can get some tax revenue. They're not thinking of you when your son, when your daughter, your brother, your sister, husband, wife, mother, father, neighbor, loved one passes from this illness. So we don't need more sound bites. We don't need more platitudes. We do not need more small thinking. We need change and we need big thinking. That happens now. We at the foundation hope to facilitate that. Please join us. Thank you so much for being here today. Thank you. Um, um,